Hey everybody, Keith Burns with Green Cover. Uh, this is another in our series of videos where we're talking about uh, opportunities for farmers uh, to get some funding to help with cover crops and soil health practices. And I have with me here Adam Keel. Adam is with the uh, Ag Soil and Water Outcomes Fund, uh, one of the major climate smart commodity grants. So Adam, thank you for joining us and tell us a little bit about the Soil and Water Outcomes Fund. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, so the Soil and Water Outcomes Fund first started in 2019, uh, provides financial uh, payments to farmers for producing environmental outcomes. And you might ask, what is that? Um, so a little different than what farmers maybe are used to seeing uh, with uh, cost share for practices. Um, we provide payment to farmers based on the environmental attributes that they create as a result of what they do and how they farm. So if a farmer, say, implements cover crops and reduces no-till or implements no-till, um, they're going to produce water quality outcomes. They're going to produce greenhouse gas reductions and removals, and we're going to pay you for those outcomes. Uh, and the more outcomes you produce, the more potential payment there is. So we're currently operating across uh, all Midwestern states, um, and in those states, uh, our average payment so far this year has been around $34 an acre, but of course that varies based on the outcomes that are produced uh, per acre. Yeah, and and first of all, I love the concept as well as the name because that's what we should be doing. We should be rewarding on outcomes and not, you know, just on practices or, or intentions. Uh, yep. So so that's great. Um, our is this eligible for only new practices or can uh, if i as a farmer be rewarded for some of the outcomes i'm doing but it's a practice i've been already doing for a while yeah so we do have a, a new practice requirement but it's on the field level um so if a farmer has been doing in you know to use an example of cover crops cover crops on half their field or half the rotation can always look at you know adding new fields in that haven't had cover crops before or looking at adding cover crops to uh, both sides of a crop rotation if it's a corn soybean rotation or uh, you know other other rotations within the, the cropping system within a field also are eligible if there's additions being made okay yeah so changing the rotation and getting more cover crops in can qualify how about if i've just been using say a monoculture cereal rye but now i want to Kind of up that game a little bit and go to a multi-species mix does that count as a new practice yeah that's something we would definitely be able to run through uh, and see what the outcomes are um, we are kind of at the mercy of some of the environmental models and tools that we use oftentimes some of those tools don't have the the depth of uh, um, being able to distinguish between cover crop single species and cover crop multi-species but uh, We'll do the best we can to, to get that in, but that would qualify the pro in the program. Um, in terms of what the outcomes are, we'd have to run that scenario and see what the, the outcomes are and the associated payments. Okay. And then I'm assuming uh, uh, bigger points or payments for things that overwinter, the well, well-managed exactly. grazing and things like that as well, all of those. Get exactly. Figured. Exactly. Yeah. And, um, you know, when you start putting things together like uh, reduction in tillage and cover crops or, you know, looking at uh, expanded crop rotations and cover crops, things in combination are also going to get you uh, the higher payments as well. And, you know, you just think about having more cover on the ground during more times of the year, having a more diverse cropping system. Those things are all going to produce more environmental outcomes and thus drive payment higher. Okay. Yeah, that's that's great. Uh, so tell us a little bit about the sign up process. If somebody's interested, or at least they want to get more information to see if they qualify, what are they? How do they go about doing that? Yeah, the first step would be to uh, uh, visit our website, theoutcomesfund.com. There, you can create a, a user account. At that point, you'll be contacted by uh, one of our field team members and. Uh, you know, you mentioned Connor earlier in the conversation. We've got field team members across the Midwest who their sole job is to help farmers enroll in the program. Uh, so you'll get in touch with one of our field team members. They can help you. Um, we can help you through the enrollment process. Um, we're going to need field boundaries and some operational data. Uh, we can do that uh, with you. Um, if you're comfortable with that, you can do it on your own. Uh, we find that most people like a little help. So our field team is out there to help. 
Um, typically within a few days after submitting your application, um, you're going to get a payment estimate. Uh, and at that point, you can either accept or reject that estimate. And if you accept it, then we're going to send you a contract for one year um, that you can sign. And we operate on one-year contracts, and then you can renew that the next year if you're happy with what you see. And if you sign a contract, we're going to get you payment in two installments. The first installment is going to come a few weeks to a month after you sign your contract. And then the second installment is going to come after we've verified uh, that you've implemented the practices. So again, we find that kind of split payment is beneficial because we know that farmers have those upfront costs, especially with cover crops. Don't want to have you wait till next spring to get your, your entirety of your payments. You're going to get 50% upfront, which hopefully helps with some of those costs that you might have. Yeah. And and that is a pretty important thing to the length of the contract because, you know, and, and there's nothing wrong with a multi-year contract as long as you understand that's what you're going into, but there's a lot of flexibility uh, with the one year. And yeah, I can, I can vouch for the fact I'm working with a couple of customers in South Dakota and got connected with Connor. And so I know that there's assistance in helping through the sign up process because you know, to be honest, that's one of the the barriers to getting into these is if a farmer says, oh, it's just going to be so much work mm -hmm. to do yeah. this and to apply. And, you know, and, and there are some programs that are really burdensome to sign up for, but it's good to hear that you know, this one isn't so bad. And, and plus there's technical assistance to help with the sign up process. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we've got people, uh, you mentioned Connor, we've got multiple people in Iowa, um, people in North Dakota, Minnesota, other states. Uh, yeah, their sole job is to help with enrollment. And yeah, totally hear you on, on programs having a burden. I hope that we're not one of those programs, but um, you know, by, by providing staff to help through that process, we can hopefully lessen the burden. Uh, we've also got connections with with John Deere Ops too, and I know a lot of farmers use John Deere Ops, and we can uh, port in data from Ops Center fairly easily. So, again, things like that to help streamline the enrollment process. We're trying to advance that every day so we can make the experience uh, the best yeah. possible for farmers. Yeah, that's great. And and so basically, if you're in a, any of the major corn and soybean type states, you're you're eligible for this program, right? Exactly. Yeah. Um, part of what we do with the program is we want to build the uh, demand and financial support before we start contacting farmers. So for every acre that enrolls, we've got a, a funder, if you will, or a partner that's on the back end uh, with their checkbook ready to, to write the check. Um, and any of those eligible areas that you see on our website um, are areas where we've got that funding secured. So we're not out there speculating that Hey, let's sign up farmers and then we'll find people to pay for those outcomes. We've got all that lined up and we know where those buyers have interest. And, and as you mentioned, um, you know, the main corn and soybean areas of the, of the Midwest are all, all eligible. And you'll see that enrollment area map on our website too. If you go there, you can just double check to make sure you're in one of those eligible areas. All right, so folks, uh, a great opportunity. If uh, you're interested, go to theoutcomesfund.com and uh, you can get all the information there and you can get started and uh, get signed up and have someone reach out to you to help answer any questions you have. Adam, thank you so much for taking the time to join us and we hope hopefully we can send a bunch of people over. Awesome, thank you, Keith. All right, thank you.